Welcome, and we are finally back with nothing else than Valorant, the only show you need to watch when it comes down to Valorant. On my side is nobody else who's also average and perfect height. It is the man himself, Mitch. Man, McBride, Mitch, man. That is a uh, slight butchering, but I, I appreciate it, Zesh. Thank you. That's uh, it's the thought that counts. And I can see you put no thought into that. So that uh, no, doesn't not. count. <laughs> well, we doing, are buddy? obviously... I mean, no, this is right. You go on. I'm absolutely just throwing it away. Go on, go on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, it's me, all hit good. Me. No, I was, I was gonna say it's, it's been a long time, man. We, we haven't seen each other since, since Bosnia. I think we haven't worked together. So <laughs> is that really? Um, you know, that's not horrible, Mitch. Yeah, it does. You, ever... you know what? <laughs> I'm very happy that in, in this instance, we're not stood up on like what a 20 foot tall uh, scaffolding that shakes. Yeah. Every time someone moves, especially Dean is like 10 <laughs> feet tall. That was, that was scary. I feared for my life. I feel much safer here. I have to say, um, if you don't know what this is all about, the last time Mitch and I saw ourselves in person were in Bosnia, which already sounds either like it has to do something with uh, so either some drug trafficking or <laughs> alternatively some very cheap alcohol. Well, it, did, it was actually but... work. It, I mean... I not not for me. I'm out of this business. But oh, uh, either way, yeah, it's it's, it's way weird. much more warm in here. It's way much more warm. It's way much more comfortable. Uh, we're obviously trying to dodge COVID as much as possible, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, what we're not dodging, dear Mitch, is the finest of Valorant. This brings me to the first, first, first question, um, which has to be answered by you. Who's the most overrated agent? The most overrated agent. Overall, overall, massively overrated. Like. This can't be even a real thing. I I I don't know that there is one. Um, I phew, wow, throw okay. me under the bus there. I guess like I I guess if I had to say the Hit most me. overused at the moment from what we were seeing in, yeah. in the Asian tournament I was just doing was Cipher probably at the moment. I feel okay. like he's been nerfed a little bit too much that I I would like Killjoy to take over as the the primary sentinel, but uh I I feel like at least in EU we're in a pretty good place where teams tend to play. The right agents. Yeah. The thing I would say, if like if, if I talk about underrated agents, Viper, yeah. Viper, Viper, yeah, 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 Viper, yeah, yeah. play listen, Viper. Listen, God listen, damn it! <laughs> listen, listen. We we had Anders on the show yesterday. Yesterday we had and I know yeah last week we had Anders on the show and I think there's nobody else who really comes in and says uh, by the way Viper is the most underrated agent and I by the way also present you a ten sheet Excel file that is going to underline what I'm saying so um, mm -hmm. yeah he, you're right I think um, also last week uh, watching from his team how good Viper can be but obviously we will talk about last week because there has been the UMG qualifier first strike Europe started hitting a lot of things so let's just dive in through and check what we have up for grabs right now what's our business and what's our deal as we'll take a look in the casual news flash which doesn't offer too much this week that's fine the esports updates which are also somewhat minimal we have the wonderful Doom Bros, who's the magic mastermind behind FPX our wish list which will once more be amazing and a great outstanding show match this is going to be fun yeah, this is going to be the last a lot one of fun is exciting this, this ma show match is going to really deliver because meow mode you know being this absolute monster and because you know many who are casually following esports valorant were like wait who was who was the team that actually were beating uh guilt in that qualifier a I guess this is a position where, if we're talking about guild within qualifier A, to be a little, little, little bit careful, a little bit cautious about what okay. we're, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, what no, we're no, stepping no. into. You know what I mean? But when when you look at uh, how they've been playing through a lot of these, like Meow Mode, they're a team that I think are not on a lot of people's radar. Like they're really not up there. True. And True. When you take into consideration the fact that, as you said, they beat them, not only did they beat them, uh, as in, you know, it's not like Guild came in and they o over or underestimated them, got smacked and it was too late to come back. They beat them in double overtime. There was a I triple know. over. It was ni 19 to 17. They pushed them all the way. At that point, you have no excuses of we weren't focused. But you're Once you hit OT, you're 100% focused on winning. Second, third, you're 100% focused on winning, and they still managed to take that win. So that was as legit as they come. So sure. I think for, for Meow Mode and a lot of EU teams, and this is what we predicted would happen when it came to these open qualifiers, and so I think what everybody knew would happen is that you would have these teams that the average person would sit there and go, oh, they're trash. They're going to get 13-1. Let's go. Absolutely. And all of a sudden, they would actually start to beat some of the better ones who 
currently now guild aren't guilty of this they've had to actually fight through open qualifiers the whole time but your g2s your yeah. nips nip especially if they were with their old roster you're in a position where they've been invited to everything they've not had to true, fight through true. those open qualifiers Absolutely. and now they kind of have to prove are they worthy of it now i think they've done that uh, certainly with this current roster but that that's the interesting part about first strike true. about open qualifiers in general and i yeah. i love it we've been crying out just get rid of the invite slots and finally we did because this also proves two two valid points. When we take a look at plane, for example, and we're just gonna really briefly do it because we wouldn't to actually talk about our our structure. When you take a look at uh, at a plane, plane really offered even the top sixteen slots. Only the first eight get into playoffs, but the first uh, sixteen slots really gave you this clear idea of which teams you might consider. You don't see them that often in BLR. You see them with this one k, two k tournaments, not the big blast ones, and you'll be like, yeah. I mean, what even do I know about them? And then they really smash it. Then they really bring it into that. It's going to be an interesting target because we're going to talk about uh, that with Doom Bros, who's the analyst behind FPX. But before we head into that, this is going to be a few chapters away, only one slight update happened player-wise. We finally know who are the top 10 players in European matchmaking. <laughs> that we do. That we do. Now, there's been, I know, a lot of uh, discussion around how we end up at the figures of who the top 10, who the top 50 yep. are, how it's calculated. I don't think anybody knows, but I think a lot of the names that you see there are very recognizable. They're players mm -hmm. that we've seen from the start, from beta, or more recently jumping up there onto signed right. rosters. I think certainly, as you'll see in slot number one, it's going to be someone that you know, maybe wouldn't be on everybody's mind, but has recently been signed and been proven themselves. And it just goes to speak to, like, if you look at top 20, it's not like everybody there is from a top, two top three team and that, that's really solid to show how deep the skill pool of european valorant is of valorant in general because that's a thing in pretty much every region that's that's one very crucial point you're pointing out right here because um some of those individuals because my logical thinking is um nobody who is pracking constantly can also be that good in open matchmaking because you have way much more time consuming actually doing scrims actually um actually seeing how well you can go and um then on the other side, I mean, for example, a guy like Brams, uh, the fifth spot right there, mainly playing Jet, obviously being there because previously also an FPLC player, ECA Advanced, you know, all those guys who don't right now really find themselves in teams um, can really grind and grind and grind whilst the other ones have to play the qualifiers, which has upsides and downsides. But, um, you know... For example, you see how much individual skill, and this is the great in comparison, for example, to CS, that they utilize their own matchmaking to highlight some, to actually really reward those players. Yeah, I think I think leaderboards is a really cool idea because it does add that extra yeah. level of competition. To now, I, I think once you start representing leaderboards regularly in game, maybe throw in some prizes for it as well, like on a monthly True. basis. It, it starts to drive this com competition because think about it, right? Counter-Strike. I've been global elite for what, four years? It means nothing. Oh, you know, why? like playing matchmaking is nothing. like, what the hell? I'm not doing it for anything. Nothing. All no. I'm doing is risking my global, right? I'm not getting anywhere further past. That's why you go to these external matchmaking sites. Now, if you actually have an in-game leaderboard with the top 100 and the top in your region, like the best in Ireland, I'd love that. I get to be t number one, um, but out of two players, th that would actually be really fun then because we add this extra depth where, okay, I'm radiant, but now I've got something else to aim at or something yeah, else to yeah, fight yeah. for. And then even if you get to number one, you're going to want to maintain that. And that's going to be hard because there's so many people fighting for it. So that's something I really like. I really hope it gets implemented. And I think it will long term um, just to keep it interesting. And funny you mentioned Brams, actually, because he was playing with a lot of the CS guys. Obviously, uh, he literally started from CS. And that's the lineup he was playing on in beta that we used to see him with. But he's just now in the middle of a game, I believe, with uh, Fifi Fee taking on Skade. I'm not sure yes. if that's finished or not yet. Um, I'm actually going to quickly yeah, check it, it, to see if they've made it through the playoffs. Um, and the, the, the point, actually want, I wanted to touch on that. I wanted to touch. You actually really take because we're later on going to talk about roster changes. Took away the point, but you, you have a very valid one because once we talk about prizes, this equivalent of Counter Strike FPL Pro League, uh, F, F, Face It Pro League will will never exist. It will die out immediately because right now there is Valorant Pro Division where there's an advantage. I think there's a slight advantage in this Face It hubs due to the fact that you can choose map and that you can actually choose who you want to play with. I think that is a quiet decent advantage. But the major difference right now is I get prizes for playing VPD. I get no prizes for playing matchmaking. Once that mm -hmm. actually changes and you get the leaderboards to have prize ranks uh, and to actually get something proper out of it, 
this is going to be it's that it's dead then it's going to be dead mm -hmm. i think even to be honest it's something that they can do very very easily if you think about prizes that you could get past money right it doesn't even have to cost them anything a simple skin? system of the top 10 get a custom skin and it could yeah. say like s something like number one right it's like it got a something that tells you they were number one in the world and then it maybe it like upgrades as well so it, it'll say like number one two times or so you know it has different levels to it so if you get to be number one ten times in a row you've got a skin that says ten, ten times and we don't have trading yeah. right so that skin is tied to you forever so that would be really cool, I think, if you had a, a system like that in place, some sort of custom skins for, for ladders, because literally it costs you nothing. All you got to do is get your beautiful artist to design some guns. And based on the stuff in the game at the moment, and I'll grind my ass off. I'll never get one, but I'll grind my ass off to try and get one. And that's, uh, that's good enough True. for me. Exactly. I mean, that, that's a valid point because it's so unique in comparison to money, obviously. Um, mm. Other than that, we are about to really, I mean, close this one out. We don't really have to s say too much about the wonderful map changes. We do have still one more thing. I thought I forgot about something. I'm actually really, really, this is not the best one. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look. There we go. That's actually one I wanted to see ages ago. It doesn't matter. Here we go. I mean, um, once we're getting into it, Avova, for example, leading the chart massively, which I... At the same time, I ask myself, this guy is playing for heretics. How much time does mm -hmm. he have, actually? How, how much free time does he have, actually, at this point in time when he's <laughs> first on the leaderboard and uh, probably scrimming and pracking with that team? So here's the thing, right? They only just got signed by heretics, right? So maybe he's built up all those points from beforehand. Now True. he's just kind of casually chipping away at it, getting a couple games in every now and then. I reckon that's probably what happened. He was the one I was talking about saying, you know, the guys in the top 10, they're not necessarily uh, the, the top five teams that you would think about. I mean, Heretics, big organization, lots of good players, but so far I wouldn't put them top 10. And you're in a position where, just because they're so new, right? They've got so much to, to yeah, build absolutely. on. Yeah, makes sense. And they're, one of their players is number one in the in EU right now, which is fantastic. And obviously that team alone, I say I wouldn't put them top 10. They had that 13-11 loss to NIP in the round of 16, right? To yeah. In the first strike playoffs. So they were so close to actually making it two games away. Now, they would have had to face G2. So probably not the best, the best of chances, even if they beat Nip. But still, they were two rounds away from actually making it there to the final stage of pushing into first strike, which is huge for a team so young. And with the kind of skill where you're number one in Europe, I can see why. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, this team has surprised me in so many ways, because first of all, you would ask, why in God's name do they have so many former Counter-Strike professionals that were decent? I mean, Lowell and Nuki obviously really at a decent level back then. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they have right now have the chance in qualifier number two. They have made in qualifier C, and um, therefore... We'll, we'll see. We'll find out. I mean, the first one has already ended. The second one is just right now resuming and continuing as we soon head into the playing stage. But we're also directly heading into our eSports changes. What has happened in the world of rosters, teams, um, unified uh, collections of players, everything right there? Well, again, not too much. Just slight adjustments here and there. And starting off, obviously, with Team Finest, uh, a mainly Israeli team, which some of you also might have heard. For example, Pont uh, has played a lot of CS back in the day and I think also made it with Juan Flatero back in the day uh, <laughs> to the Major. I'm fairly sure he was the one who actually made that. That's expert pronunciation there. I'm not even going to try, but if you look at Cape is... Yeah. <laughs> sorry, oh my sorry. God, yeah. Sorry. Not even going to attempt it. Uh, Cape is, he used to be on Royals back in beta, and he was solid as hell there. That was one of the best teams in Europe at the time. They were dominating a lot of these. They were only like 5K, 10K tournaments, but those were the big ones way back then. And then you look even further back into his history, way back like 2018, 2017, he was playing with, you know, some small players, artists, Eccles, Ned, in UK Prem. So he's been around. Um, his flag actually caught me off guard because all the other guys, you look at Team Liquid, for example, they're all UK flags, right? He's got he's an English, English flag. I yeah. don't know what that's about. Maybe he's super patriotic, but not for the nation, for, for his country, not for the whole empire. I don't know what that's about, to be honest, but uh, I'd stick with the one flag uniform. But he's also, <laughs> which is so sad, you gotta get the violins out. My man K Piz was a sage main. And I mean, he just got hit. He got hit yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really sucks, but, but it recover. is what it is.
True, <laughs> and I mean, uh, this, this lineup itself right now also making it through first strike, obviously. Um, in this, uh, actually today at 6 p.m., they made it in round of 32 against Event Horizon. So last chance, last stage right now, stand in the top 30 of Europe. We'll see what that will bring for a little a bit of um, understanding for everybody who's not that out of CS world. Uh, there has never been a really successful Israeli <laughs> CS team, for example. So might be the opportunity to break through in uh, that direction. Yeah, there's always been a couple of Israeli players that really stood out to me. I mean, I used to, I spent like a good year or maybe year and a half covering Middle Eastern qualifiers for all the big events. And that was really, really solid. You would see like one or two Israeli players come through and just start to really, really dominate. Um, but never like a full team that was able to drive it all sure. the way home and make it into Europe properly. And I think a lot of that is due. They have a really bad time infrastructure wise. They have to play their normal scrims, even though like in a lot of tournaments, they'll play Middle Eastern, their normal scrims are in EU. So they could be playing on 80 to 100 ping as normal. Like I get 80 to 100 ping in a matchmaking, I'm losing my mind. And these guys are doing that on a daily basis. And I remember speaking to them and being like, how do you do it? You know, like that, that infuriates me. And they're like, you just got to get on with it. Right. We have no other option. Yeah. Like, yeah. You damn. have to accept it. But, I mean, that's, that's a crucial thing, obviously at that point, because what are you supposed to do with it? It's now they have really got the, the, the African sort of African and uh, uh, closer East region supported, you know, the MENA region that is finally getting its support, but it still is going to be a different competitive feel, right? We, we, we saw it in, uh, for example, once more addressing CS where teams have actually moved to Europe, for example, to get a better competitive field. Maybe that's going to be the next step once the uh, Corona is stopped being so annoying but other than that uh, yeah it's, we're gonna find out we're gonna find out heading further into it you already mentioned the team that i would have liked to very much talk about it is skate also doing a bit of a difference and that is funny because they're doing pretty much a difference or more likely doing the change in roster mid between the qualification of first strike like directly in between it yeah, that's not a good sign for the players that were replaced, I have to say. And I think no. in terms of, you've got KP coming in, I think he's filling an omen role. Uh, he is, I think, a, a very good replacement uh, that they're putting in. Certainly looking at the stats between them, uh, KP will be solid. Lee, obviously coming in to fulfill the coaching role. It, it, look, it doesn't necessarily say a negative thing about the players, but how they fit into that roster and the coaching. There was obviously some disagreement there. If you're going to make those kind of changes mid, it, it says two, one of two things. Either it is that your fundamental view of the game didn't match up. Like you look at Nato Safix recently leaving his team. That was it. He yep. had a choice. He could have stayed, but he's just like, nope, we just disagree on how to play Counter-Strike. It's nothing bad about them or me. It's just, we just don't view it the same. That's, what is, what that's is, fine yeah. to leave on those kind of bases. Or it says desperation that you're in this situation where you're like, we have to qualify, we have to get in, make some changes, like get it ready, get us ready for the next qualifier. I don't know which it is, but it seems to be working so far. As I said, they're playing Fifi Fee right now to confirm their spot in first strike. So there's uh, a lot of pressure, but they made it all the way through to the last spot for the for the playoffs. Uh, last, I love how you say Fifi Fee. One game away. Fifi Fee. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably names, something man. French we don't get. I could imagine something We've, French we don't understand. So it's been around for so long, man. Fear, 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 fee, 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 nif, nif, nif. Like, I don't know what it is, but these mixed teams just come along and go, let's yeah. pick one of our players and say his name three times. And that's going to be, I, it doesn't come from Counter-Strike. I don't know where it comes from, but it apparently it's a thing. I, f I hope once in a while we have a segment. You know, b back in back in CS and HLTV, you have all those uh, sick sick uh, player names and team names. I hope once in a while we get that in Valorant because that's going to be absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Other than that, we have already seen some good outstanding changes happening in our way with that. Pittsburgh Knights have also done something very similar um, before they were actually about to hop into the UMG qualifier because the Pittsburgh Knights suddenly said, guys, uh, it's time for us to find a roster. T clock's ticking. November 10th. How about we pick up um, somebody like Ronaldo, Frosty, and Co. Interesting move because that, you know, previously playing in, in, that, um, in that team, somewhat Moon Raccoons, then they're also just not playing together at all it's a little weird it's an interesting move because uh the pittsburgh knights have actually made it through the second qualifier and actually made it in first to fourth place so quite decent yeah i, I always find it very difficult to to sit back and say you know why roster changes were made unless i yeah, know the obviously. players and know what's going on inside because you never want to like take it at face value and be like oh well these players were bad therefore they were changed. like it, there's so many things as we said with nato was the best way. example 
where he's just like, we just don't fit. And sometimes that happens, right? It's like an ending a relationship. It doesn't have to be on bad terms. Usually it is, but it's not always. So you don't want to assume, right? Just wait till you hear both sides of the that's, story. That's very but, philosophical. It is, Go isn't on. it? It's, I mean, I a team, a team is a relationship, right? I think yeah. that uh, a lot of the time you're going to play together. You're going to fist bump. You probably hold hands get dinner together. You know, there's lots of things that you'll, you'll be True. doing as a team for bonding exercises. True. I think they're going to need to be on a very good emotional level with each other though, because as you mentioned, Pittsburgh Knights, they're playing against immortals next. That's going to be a tough game for them, but one that they can definitely, I, you look at the history that Pittsburgh have at the moment. One of the best things for me was that we had, uh, I think one of their players came from Mamba mode, right? And then ended up uh, going and beating them. Or am I mixing that up? Oh no, sorry. No, I'm mixing that up with someone that will be coming up later. Never mind. I was you, mixing you, my notes. Actually, yeah. it, does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you have a very valid point. You have a very valid point. First of all, if you ask me, uh, this this lineup previously called Destined um, had mm -hmm. nothing to lose. I mean, they were coming into this, and sure, Pittsburgh Knights were signing. And, ah, yeah, that's 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 a bit of a that's a bit of a you know pressure situation on them. But on the other hand, you know, Destined did fine mostly, but they were not like exceptionally good. Sure, they lost to Envy in the round of 32 of the NSG qualifier. Yeah, that's all right. I mean. It's 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 okay to some degree, but there was not like this major pressure. And they come in blazing, get f first to fourth, pick up wins against Chiba, Mamba Mo, Taimon, and um, you're, you're just be like, yeah, I'm fairly surprised. I didn't expect that one to happen. Yeah, 100%. I think that that success that they have, obviously when you come in with nothing to lose, it's it's always helpful. Then an organization signs you, all of a sudden you've got this pressure, or especially when you're in that negotiation stage, it, mm -hmm. this is the thing that's often overlooked, is like, they don't just sign you and that's when the pressure's on. I would argue there's more pressure when they first contact you or respond to you and say, yeah, yeah maybe we're interested in, in taking you. Now you've got a tournament coming up, you better perform in that or they're going to turn around possibly and be like... Uh, we, we found someone else like they'll, they'll not want you anymore. So that's really when the pressure is on. And I think we've yeah. seen some teams in the past kind of they, they play, they drop off a little bit and then there's like roster changes or they get signed by an org. And I think that that's actually a, a large reason for why you'll see some of these slip ups happening is if there's something like that going on behind the scenes. Yeah. which is another reason that it's so dangerous for us whenever it's like, especially like North America, which I'm completely disconnected from the players and all that sort of stuff um, really to make any projections on results because we have no idea what's happening behind the scenes. Um, and so you can never really say, oh, they played bad. They, they'll probably change the roster. Could be something like an organization was talking to them and it made them a little bit shaky. True. And well, before we are just discussing this one to the end of it, we obviously have one more final one to go. And that is the one you mentioned. Mamba Mode have decided to swap things around slightly. Obviously, uh, had to happen once in a while, seemingly. And um, as we see, it is what it is. Picking up the screenshot right now. November 11th, Critical is acquired by Built by Gamers. And suddenly he swaps to the different site. Yeah, it was quite funny, actually, in this instance, because he was uh, left Mamba mode, obviously, went to BBG and then beat Mamba mode on BBG. So that, that was a nice little uh, nice little start for him over there. One of the best ways you can really begin uh, one of the one of these new lineups is by beating your old team. And I think again, what's the second match? Another situation. What's actually you're right. second match? That's it's not second, too shabby. Second matchup. No, 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 it isn't. No, oh, okay. But <sighs> either way, you know, their, their Haven didn't go too well, but the other maps they managed to win out, even though it was an OT. There was a world in which they lost that 2 0, but just about managing to step over the hurdle. And I think that's it's a fantastic little confidence boost for yeah. you on uh, starting out this lineup versus your old team. Smack them out, and you say, Yeah, I think I made the right move. Yeah, true. And a very valid point. As uh, we have seen that one uh, come in once in a while, those roster changes sometimes just give you things which you wouldn't expect to happen. And then it's it's just suddenly working out. It's suddenly working out. Being right, though, it's a bit of an issue because being disconnected from EU to the NA scene, you don't have the same insight. But at the same time, it is amazing to watch what we're right now having in our hands. It's right now amazing to watch what Valorant has delivered. And other than that, dear Mitch, we'll head into a little break. We're going to be right back in a second. And then we got the big... Amazing minds called Doom Bros. Come right away. We'll talk about a bit of European first strike. Finally, we're heading home. So don't go anywhere. We'll just be right back. Well, 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 it is the man Doom Bros. We got it's finally time to head into our interview section immediately as we are talking about outstanding insights from a man who actually already qualified for first strike. 
How are you doing, Dubros? I'm doing fine. How are you guys? I'd say good. I'd say good. I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> at this point in time, uh, Mitch and I got probably 10 million questions. So therefore, I'm going to leave it first to Mitch because um, this man's this man's mind is already glowing. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Dimmers, I, I honestly, I think, I don't know how long they've assigned us for this. I think it's like half an hour. I, I could sit here for the next two days. We could just have a chat <laughs> about all this sort of stuff. We've had some great chats in the past, but I want to start by asking you first strike, right? Open qualifier. One of the first you guys have faced, definitely in recent times, this is a new experience for you guys running through open qualifiers and not being invited directly. What was the challenge like for you? What was the change from playing the same 10 teams to now all of a sudden coming up against these teams that you'd never seen before? Yeah, I mean, that's not entirely true since um, before we became FPX, um, we were called Fabriken, right? And we had to mm -hmm. actually yep. qualify for a lot of tournaments and play a lot of best of ones <laughs> and not get invited, right? Um, yeah. And we also, before this uh, first strike, we entered a, a tournament with a best of one format just to be prepared because we knew it's going to be, yeah, a challenge. And you never know. We, we we're almost... I'm going to say it right now, we were down, I think, 10-5 or something uh, on Haven against a team we never saw before in a best of one um, in this first mm -hmm. strike. So it was def definitely scary and, yeah, uh, definitely <laughs> made me uh, have a bit of a headache after afterwards, you know? Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, we, we actually, we cast that, uh, myself and Banks worked with you on that Valorant Contenders Cup, right? Uh, and we yeah. talked to you back then and you guys were saying how, you know, you got to get prepared for these kind of tournaments. And we spoke with Angel and he was saying how it, there was going to be this situation where they, they wanted, you guys wanted to be prepared against uh, some of the lower teams. Maybe you wouldn't participate uh, all the time, but those tournaments are very good for the scene. Was there anybody uh, in particular, obviously you're saying this team that to, almost took you down, right? That you were behind yeah. by so much. Mm -hmm. were, there, were there any teams there that you, you're thinking maybe will will go on to be big contenders like do you see a shake up in the scene now that we're going to open qualifiers or do you think it's we're going to see the same name still up towards the top of the board oh i i have one favorite team uh for me and it's uh, oh. exile actually the lithuanians okay. uh, mm -hmm. i really really think we're uh, we're good and i think we're gonna be a top contender they, they came from nowhere people are still thinking yeah. they, they cheat right uh but i've i what i watched from them um, I was impressed, uh, and what I'm gonna say now, I'm sorry, Sam, if you're watching, but I felt like they won the first uh, map against Sam, and that they played better. Uh, that ascent. Um, what, what what is it? What is it about the the Lithuanians? I I, yeah. I remember back in beta uh, when it was Fabrikan, Party Pirates. You guys were fighting against uh, Royals back then, and these guys again, like you look at them in Counter Strike, and they're like tier three maybe pushing into tier two they come into valor and they're just gods whoa what's happening yeah i think it's something to do with the water or something i don't know i don't know if there exists some steroids for valorant but <laughs> like you have a vac right uh, in um in mm -hmm. Orpenki, and then you have uh this team and is leaking also lithuanian uh, yeah, i'm not sure so. yeah I'm of sure course he is, he is. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> he was one of the more, more scarier guys. Uh, I remember when he left the Royals, uh, and that team never became um, as good as they usually were, right? So, yeah, Th I don't know a... why. But, uh... No, sorry, finish, yeah, finish your ahead. point, pardon that one. No, no, yeah, yeah, I, I, was, I was just going to say, uh, yeah, no, you, you can start with your own. Okay, uh, whatever. We, we have, a very, have a very interesting point because I saw them play um, w when they were still all the rage and there was an Austrian uh, league going on. Everybody rebranded, you know, Austrian organizations were picking up those teams. And also, you know, uh, right now the team Exile, who used to be then um, all the rage, I talked to them. I had a conversation with them. And I, I remember very much that when I talked to them, they said, we don't have a dedicated IGL. We're just playing aggressive. We're just trying to open our rooms. How do you personally think this could align with then this being a team that in the future will really step up and that or many people are sleeping on? Yeah. I think uh, 
it might be positive for them that they don't have a caller, right? Uh, okay. Some teams, I think, benefit from having it a bit more free handing you know in this game a bit more improvisation because it's it's not like csgo there's a lot of things going on a lot of uh, small plays you can do a lot of micro calls you can do with your abilities right um i think another example of that was the old nip lineup uh, i i think they're also kind of just flowing with it anyone who had a plan could call it you know anyone who wants to do something aggressive could do it and that, that kind of leads to that unpredictable style where you see them always do some aggro play on defense, always making their opponents really uncomfortable. Um, and I, I can reveal this as a team that is really, really structured. We struggle a lot against these almost uh, puggy teams, but it's, okay. it's wrong to say puggy teams, right? Because it's, it's good. And if it works, it works. So. True. Yeah, I think uh, funny uh, as you mentioned these guys. Uh, you say NIP to me, uh, an example of those as well is G two. Obviously, like the, yeah, I've watched some of the streams when I was on the analyst desk. I'd get to jump in and just watch one of their personal streams, listen to the comms, and there's points where everybody's just kind of shouting like, like, "No, you, you shut up, let me call." And that's yeah. that. That must be so hard to kind of anti strat when sometimes someone just goes. I feel like doing this. I'm going to just go for it. And then you've got this very structured way of playing the game and they they just don't care. They just don't go in for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think also that's uh, why they are so good. But I I saw their stream now uh, and I think we're going a bit more towards the structured route, uh, which I'm not sure it's, it's going to benefit them because I think their strength was that kind of flowy style unpredictability you know um mm -hmm. and not being being as tied down to uh rules you know um yeah but yeah we'll yeah, see for sure i think that one of the questions i would have then just to quickly throw in with uh with g2 you're saying that you don't think it would benefit them i i feel like in the long term uh having that kind of approach where you're super loose people are gonna figure you out even though it's obviously not a set strat to figure out but I, it, to me, it seems like a short-sighted thing. It can work for a couple months. It might work for a year, but two, three years down the line, are you going to get away with that? Especially with lots more agents coming in, like Riot said, six per year. D do you think that within Valorant, because obviously I'm thinking about it in my Counter-Strike brain, very different yeah. game in Valorant. Do you think maybe that's something that you could see some teams actually d uh, deploy further down the line? Is this loose style or is it ultimately going to have to be a real tactical base? Um, it depends on what time frame you're talking about, right? Um, and what you're, that's why it's so important to set, set expectations, especially from your org, right? Uh, are your goals to have a long-term uh, success, right? Or do you need to win first strike in four weeks? Uh, and yeah. I think going the structure route, as you said, it's going to kind of have a, a dip in the beginning and then... Uh, yeah, a better outcome in the end, right? Uh, because you need to learn how to listen and how to follow and how to play structured. Uh, it's some important skills you need to have as a player. You know, you, you can't just go around and uh, frag, you know, and be uh, a yet off main, you know, and <laughs> think you're going to get away with it because most structured teams are just going to slow the pace down, right? And uh, then you're out of your place and you don't know what to do, how to react. Uh, so I think just in the long term, you you kind of have to have a structure, or at least learn uh, how how to listen and play out of listening and not just doing. You know. Mm -hmm. This this leads me to one point. We're we're getting a little bit away from 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 the first strike thing for a second, just for a second, because I'd like to very much go into something more personal. Um, I was you know I was I was doing my research before, and when when we when we heard you got have you in the show, and I was I was looking at the picture, and for a second I was like. I, I interviewed that guy a few weeks ago. That's that's not Doom Bros. And then and then I read it on I read it on on Wikipedia saying you are the twin brother of Emil. How did you both like? That, what has it been that both of you have been saying? You know what? We're, we're actually going to start coaching because initially you both were with Fabrican. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my brother was uh, a pro, like a pro player for in Overwatch, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was kind of um, uh, because the Overwatch was kind of. Um, you couldn't uh, self-sustain as easily. So I was uh, working at the graveyard uh, just to support us two uh, in like our eSport dream. 
Uh, and I always watched uh, all his screams. Like I, I probably watched uh, like three k hours of uh, screams from him. Uh, and then I decided to okay, I'm I'm gonna try coaching a bit in Overwatch. Uh, and I did that, but not on a really high level. Like I kind of mm-hmm. coached uh, a female team and did some some other stuff. And then in Valorant, um, we actually started in Fabrik and with me being the coach and him being a player. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, funnily enough. Uh, we cut him uh, and another player for Shadow and Meadow. <laughs> so he was kicked, right? And then I told him, like, you have so much experience uh, and, like, we have the same DNA. I know how, how you think and you, you would <laughs> be a really good coach. You know, you just need some uh, some time to do it, right? So that's kind of how it happened. And I was the head yeah. coach and he kind of was the... Uh, the student, uh, and now he's the head coach of NIP, and I'm the, <laughs> the analyst, right? So, uh, oh, but nice. yeah, that, that's kind of how it happens. So, uh, and he's also we're 26. It's uh, there's not many, many people who can play at a high level when you're uh, closing on 30 years old, except Angel. Uh, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exception. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. He, he's like entry, God, so yeah. Entry frag and brimstone. What what can you do against that, really? Uh, but I I want to actually pose one of Zesh's questions that he gave me to you. Oh no! He asked me at the start of this stream, <laughs> out of nowhere, no warning, caught me off guard. Who is me the most me. overrated agent in the game? Now, yeah. I didn't have the right answer. I actually I think I know what your answer is going to be. So I'm going to ask you more pointed: Is Jet the most overrated agent in the game? Oh yeah, you, you guessed exactly correctly. Oh. Okay, really? I, I almost uh, sweared. Yeah, it's she's the <laughs> most overrated, but also the most powerful. Uh, okay. Both both statements are true. Uh, mm-hmm. I think teams are kind of defaulting to her. Um, looking at Korea, I'm thinking, oh shit, we can do all, all these plays, you know, uh, yeah. and it's gonna be good. Um, but I think it's not necessarily a good strategy for the long term. You, you, you can't just do plays around the map. Uh, there's a lot more to it. Uh, and if, if your play doesn't work, what will you do then? Um, it's like I watched... Oh, I'm not going to go with, uh, too into it. Like I, I don't want to be making enemies, <laughs> but I, I think Yet is, the Yet Dash is one of the most powerful abilities in the game, and her smokes yeah. as well. The, the dash and the smokes. Uh, and the updraft is just uh, cheesy. Like, they should remove that from the game. Uh, but <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's not necessarily a play the way people play her or the play style. I don't think it's uh, good for the teams. I think it's uh, overrated. Yeah, quickly, very quickly, jumping on it. Why the smokes? Why why are the smokes that powerful for you? Uh, it enables her to do the dash uh, okay. execute. Uh, it also enables her to be like just mid game, like uh, get away with stuff, smoke smoke off. Uh, things and the smokes are actually pretty long it's not like it used to be where it's more like combat smokes you, you can as- actually use it to uh, rely on that smoke for a whole execute you know ah uh, i see i see what's going on here you've been see, coaching yeah. liquid a bit haven't you you've been coaching no. liquid <laughs> secretly I've been, wa- <laughs> I've been watching liquid and fueling inside because um yeah i, we, I, I don't like the um, like the vision striker copy uh I don't think we're gonna play it either in the in the main stage mm-hmm. because I think they're hiding stuff or playing in a certain way to throw teams off. Because uh, yeah, we're just doing flash and dash uh, plays with yet just every round, um, and that was pretty much it. Talking about that quickly, quickly getting actor in actually actually back into our original topic. I think we don't need to talk about that G2 has been dominating Europe um, so much um, in many senses. But I think you wouldn't be sitting here and telling me, yeah, they're, 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 they're going to gonna continue do so, doing so. What do you think is the weakness many people don't understand, don't get about G2 that is actually understandable at one point? I think their, their weakness for sure is their attack. Uh, I think they had a w- really weak attack. Um, they didn't, now they do, but in the beginning, they didn't understand how to default properly mm-hmm. uh, and how to kind of mask uh, their straight rounds, right? So they're very readable um, and you could basically over-rotate against them. 
yeah. that's one thing right, why yeah i'm not scared about about them on attack it's it's their defense that that is really strong because they they can understand how to rotate really quick and they understand how to push on timing catch people off guard if you look okay. at them playing like 80 percent of their win why they win is just because every time they catch someone off guard when they weren't expecting it it's the only win condition they have for okay. sure like uh it, no, nothing more nothing more to it and on the on, yeah on attack it's it's like very straightforward nothing nothing brainy they're just good players with good uh yeah rush b you know uh, but I know there have been, they have been changing up their playstyle a little bit, and I know their trial coach at the moment, and I know for sure he's gonna try to get them to play a bit more uh, unpredictable, right, and a bit more defaulty uh, stuff, you know. So we were expecting that. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, th I found it kind of uh, interesting as well. I, I was kind of sweating looking at how the initial playoff bracket got rendered for first strike. I want to ask, you know, in the run up to that, before it was announced, did, did, how did you feel, right, waiting to find out? And were you super relieved when you saw G2, Guild, and NIP, and Heretics all in that one little section? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, my dream is, uh, because I'm... I'm I'm scared of heretics, okay? My dream is, can just heretics get into a really bad bracket? Uh, maybe Guild can get into a really bad bracket, right? And those yeah. teams can just be eliminated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we, we can get some uh, other teams, you know? That's that's all I'm... Because I'm, I'm confident we will qualify, uh, for sure, with our seed. So I'm just looking for... Uh, you know, it's... it's the, the format has, hasn't been good for the competitive integrity, right? But for mm -hmm. us as a team, the more chaos and the more teams that's eliminated, the yeah. better for us, right? Uh, <laughs> that's how I see it. Um, so, yeah, uh, except I hope Nip gets an easy bracket, of course, because uh, that's my second favorite team. Uh, no bias, of course. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Very valid point. Um, quickly, quickly touching touching onto this entire uh, NIP thing, or more likely entire European Valorant. Um, give me your give me your take on that because we we are still missing out a lot of professionalism in Europe due to the great that organizations are not buying so much into that. Do you have any personal idea? Just personal idea why European organizations are so afraid of jumping into Valorant whilst North America is like, here, uh, let me sign those uh, former major winners. Let me sign those uh, former Counter-Strike professionals. What, what, what do you think is really the difference between those regions for you personally? Uh, I know, or yeah, okay, personally, I'm saying personally now, but I know uh, a big reason is just marketability and of course, like Twitter followers. Uh, here in Europe, we don't have the biggest stars, right, and the biggest streamers. Uh, we had Scream, and obviously, uh, for sure, most orgs probably had an arms race to signing him. Uh, other than that, most orgs don't care about results, I would say, uh, until they know more about Riot's plans for maybe the next year, if there's going to be okay. a league, uh, whatever, you know. This first year has been more of a testing grounds, and the orgs know that, that it's really risky to kind of commit to players this early, uh, especially with COVID going on and probably the revenue isn't mm -hmm. uh, isn't there. So it's it's a lot of like how, how much can we market our players online, that kind of sense. And I don't think that's as big in Europe as it it's, it's in NA because, yeah, reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Reasons. It really does. And I think that's something that a lot of teams or a lot of players don't do correctly i mean we even had an issue in a tournament recently let me put it that way where certain teams objected to they weren't on stream and they they objected to having content made around them or around the, the place and i get it you want to conceal strats 100 i'm down with that but there's a certain level where we still have players that decline interviews and th there is an element of okay maybe you're not comfortable and all that but building a brand is such an important thing right as you're saying if you want to have organizations coming to you if you want to provide value to your organization that's something that is essential i mean you're here repping fpx in a way <laughs> yeah, um, yeah so it's important definitely. i i agree it's um 
it's something not m most people think about when starting their esports career. It's uh, it's not only about uh, what rank you ha have or your headshot percentage. It's it's <laughs> how you are online. Like um, basically, we're in an entertain entertainment industry. Like it, it's not right. it's not a it's not a sport. It is a sport, but it's it's about uh, how you can entertain the people watching, right? And you kind of have to be someone who entertains in your own way. Maybe your way of en entertaining is you shooting heads, right? Uh, but then you have to be really, really good. Um, yeah. So I get your point, but uh, my co counter argument, because I've obviously my my peeps <laughs> in my uh, team also declaring interviews, and it's mm -hmm. probably just because uh, when you kind of want to win as much as we do, uh, you see every interview as something uh, you maybe become nervous, right, or pressured, and you kind of want to take yeah. away every kind of pressure you can before everything, really? because you, uh, it's like, okay, this maybe gives me five percent more win percentage if I don't do this interview because I'm so nervous uh, being in front of a camera talking a language okay. that's not my first, you know, um, stuff like this. Uh, and we have, mm -hmm. except Angel, but we have a lot of young uh, young people in our team. Yeah. Uh, who, who and that's the sole reason. It's not that uh, hiding stress because. Uh, oh yeah. I I think if they were comfortable, they, they would go on and talk. But it's more like um, like the social thing uh, and being nervous mm -hmm. and shy. For sure. I mean, look. One of the things I'll say straight off is like we've asked for Z uh, interviews with Zipan a couple of times, and yeah. obviously he, he hasn't wanted to. That guy can build a brand around being good at the game because he is probably one of the best. No, he's one of the best players in the world. Probably the best. I love watching Zip and have since day one. So honestly, he like he can just hide his face. He can sit at land with like a black box around him and no one can see him. If anything, that'd probably be better for his brand. because uh, it'd be a mystery. Who is he really? Um yeah. that's an idea for you. All right. I'll I want 10% commission. <laughs> but uh <laughs> I like I, I think the the thing is when you're starting out, I think it's something that you need to build on, uh, just because not everybody can be that good, right? Someone like Simple, for example, he could never speak English, never speak to anyone, stay away from all the interviews, but people love him because he's unreal at the game. Zipan, I think, is in that same boat, but it's something that um, I think isn't unique. And when you fall off eventually, right? Where, as you said, not everybody yeah. can be Angel, be 30 years old and still be entry fragging on a brimstone. Um, it's something that <laughs> at least then you'll have something to fall back on. I, I want to just lean into a question, though, off the back of that. Um, we've seen a lot of teams. Uh, play out and then make it through to playoffs there's a potential that for some of these teams maybe you haven't played against them maybe they make it all the way through to first strike but they haven't they only get that one game right that one best of three on stream how challenging mm. is that for you to then collect data on these teams in this stage when there's no yeah. streams going on for those lower stage best of ones yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna reveal some things here. Um. So. Okay. The the match history in in Valorant is really broken. Uh, in scrims, everyone restarts the game in midway, so it doesn't come up on the match history. But in tournaments, even when you're not on stream, oh. uh, the whole match history um gets posted. Every round, every engagement, everyone's positions, uh, the timing of the engagements, the timing of your executes, um. Yeah, uh, map picks, er everything, right? So most of the teams are either removing everyone from a friend list um, or like oh, me, okay. uh, adding people to my friend list. <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> going to have everyone re remove me from a friend list uh, now, but uh, every most teams do it, right? So gathering data from tournaments uh, isn't so hard. Um, imagine even if you had the API access, um, you could make uh, heat maps, you could make... Yeah, mm -hmm. whatever you want. Uh, but fortunately, it's kind of in a middle state where you can have to be friends with someone, go into their match history and check. Uh, and I, I rather have it all public or nothing is public. You know, it's kind of yeah, in a yeah. middle state where you kind of have to work. Like, it's not in a good state. So, yeah. But usually, that's how it goes. Uh, usually with good teams who have a good idea of what their playstyle is, uh, but to be honest, it, it's, it's, you don't have to prepare too much. You, you can have to prepare uh, the simpler, more 
easy stuff for the players, right? Because the players are not going to mm -hmm. be like, for instance, Angel. Uh, we need to play our game and we kind of have to have some pointers and some triggers maybe uh, that they can focus on and just yeah. simple um, simple pictures. That's basically what I do. See simple pictures for them to have mm -hmm. on the other monitor, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And then with uh, Angel and our uh, mystery coach, which isn't announced, we kind of go go more in depth into uh, a mystery coach. into like into this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually have. I can talk a little about about him. Oh, I said him. Oh, shit. But yeah, but he's, uh, he's actually, uh, Who could have guessed? he's yeah. so amazing. Uh, and we had him since After Blast, right? And hopefully he's announced soon, but, uh, and he's been helping a lot. And it's been me, him, and Daniel, we're kind of the uh, guys who've been working with the players. Uh, and it's, yeah, the it's been amazing. Too. Can uh, everybody understand his Swiss accent or is that just a... Uh... <laughs> Sweet. No, no, no. It's oh, not, well, what uh, is his accent? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say his accent. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say he's, um, he's the most experienced person. Like, he's one of the more experienced persons uh, in this type of a game, you know? He's, 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 he's a legend, for sure. So... Okay. Well, not everyone has to speak like Maniac to just be playing in front of the stage. <laughs> Thank you very much for that one. I appreciate your time, yeah. Bros. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Yeah. Have a good evening. Good luck with the further future of First Strike. And, well, getting away from First Strike, unfortunately, um, we are not talking about Maniac's amazing, not pronounceable last name, or about the possibility how much he could actually... Is it that? It's not that so. easy. Close Never, enough. ever. Have you ever oh. seen how that one is spelled? Yes, it's, it's insane. It's, not it's nice. insane. Either way, we're directly hopping into our next segment. Will be the Valorant wish list, where we are discussing the wishes we have and had in the past. Thank you very much for your time, Doom Bros. Again, and see you guys um, about the next one with uh, First Strike Regional Files. That's right. So, heading into our next one, heading into finally what we are now. Once more, you and myself finally bring up the candlelight dinner as well. Um, I have a wish. <laughs> It's very good. Do you have a do you have a do you have a bass anywhere or something? <laughs> so you can, uh, you can a a bass guitar. guitar. I mean, just like yeah. I can I can I can yeah I can dim the lights a little bit, get the guitar out, some candles, very take nice. my top That's off. Quite a little oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you don't want to get banned on Twitch. I don't know what's up with you. <laughs> Either way, um, I have my first wish, and my wish is very simple. I very much hate. I I, I generally hate deathmatch and Valorant. I think it's absolutely. <laughs> And you no, know, I don't hate it, but it's not that much fun. You know, I don't know how, if you, how often you play that much, but it all, often seems like the guy who's camping the most wins or the guy who's playing the most on sound wins. All right, you know, you do it for the learning effect. But I would like to have pistol left match and uh, headshot only. I think those are two modes which are very enjoyable, which you see a lot in the community servers and Counter-Strike, where you can specifically either train, like the Ghost, for example, the Classic, the Sheriff, or alternatively... Um, you can just go for headshots, which I think is very vital in some point of the game because, you know, in, in those public deathmatch stories, you can try to do headshots only. It will not work because before you even have the time, you will be sprayed down anyway. So I think that would be a nice addition from time to time. If it's headshot only, we need to make sure that Riot put you on either 100 HP or lower so that at least, like, don't give you armor because otherwise, right, Phantom yeah, versus yeah. Phantom, you're going to be in trouble. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that would be a nice addition. Uh, I think. Uh, for me, I, I don't play deathmatch at all. I'll just queue spike rush to be honest. If I want to warm up, it does mean that yeah. you get that little bit of variance in terms of weapons. But if I want to practice a vandal, I'll just go on a custom server and like the shooting range with a vandal, fire away at some bots, just random parts of the wall, whatever. Um, but no, it will be really nice to have those kind of features coming into the the future. I think for me, the thing I want the most is it's always going to be, and I'm speaking for Doom Bros here as well because I actually asked him before. It's demos, man. Demos. Come on. We, we need demos. Now, yeah, yeah, this is yeah, the thing. Okay. It's so easy to sit here and go, just make demos, bro. That takes a long time. Yeah, like, that yeah, is yeah, fair. Yeah. Changing a mode for deathmatch, easy. They can do that, you know, tomorrow. Easy, easy. Making demos is going to take a long time to perfect. I mean, look, it took Valve, what, seven, eight years before they even attempt to update their demo system. Is that because they don't care? Yes. But... Riot do. So I'm hoping that we don't have to wait seven years for that. I'm hoping we get a nice demo system. I would take it a step further. I would sure. say when they do yeah. it, 
bring out like a skybox style system or yeah gg or many other websites that do a similar thing that would be amazing if they did that I Hell, mean, integrate it with vr because that's one of the f- most fun thing i have is like what enti- um, wait, 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 wait. There's, there's VR? a game you can like there's a, there's a game that you can like in vr when you die or you can just spectate in general you can like move the map around and like fl- like you could kind of as if you're a giant looking at a mini table yeah. Like, okay. you can move your head around to look at the map. It's so cool. It gets me so excited. But why wouldn't you just do Skybox? You know what? Oh. You could do Skybox, but then a VR option. That's, that's all I'm asking for. I want to be able but to look why? at my little, why? my little phoenix flashing out and get blinded in VR so I can never see a thing again. A Did you fun. ever... You know, let's consider realistically. Who's watching demos? People who actually want to improve and try to learn something. Do you think that... Like, like for example, Doom Bros. Is be like, yeah... I'm watching a demo right now. Now, let me just put on my VR headset real quick so I can see the Phoenix Slash coming around the corner. I don't see that happening, Mitch. I don't see that. I think that it's a you very blatantly... Yeah. You want to be in the game, right? You want to live the game. Feel the game. And that's that's what VR is for, man. Let's, let's you, you would swear I had stakes in a VR company at this point. But it's it's a gimmick I've invested into, so I want some uses for it, okay? In eSports. I'll say... I, Listen, listen, listen. Imagine, right, imagine it takes two years from now till we have a demo player. And and you'll be like, oh, f- finally, they released a demo player. Let me watch Let me watch the patch notes. Oh, it just says 80, 60% of our time consumption took us to put to the VR mode, so actually everybody can play <laughs> VR. Imagine that would be the case. Everybody like, <laughs> guys, why? <laughs> What's the purpose? <laughs> I've never heard That's that. True. It's just, this true. is odd. This is odd. What you're doing here is odd, but I'll accept it. VR. No. Why? So, you you said deathmatch. I've got demos, uh, but it, yeah. again, I think I I've given a very unachievable thing. If we were to give Riot something that they could do within the next six months, reasonably, because even demos, I I don't know. I, I'm terrible at programming. I can barely program it to say hello world. So, I don't yeah. know how long it's going to take to make demos. And obviously, they're focusing on a lot of things. I want to just commend, actually, rather than a wish, an appreciation of mine is the fact yeah. that we have got a system where I think it's arguable that every agent in there. Now, I'm not talking about Sky. Uh, we haven't seen enough of her. I think she's a bit OP at the moment. We'll see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. let, let the statistics talk about that. But the other agents in the pool, I think every single one of them, at least on one map, is viable as a pick. None yeah, of, of them, I think, are in a stage where they're insanely overpowered. Like, if you don't play with with them, you'll lose the game. That is insane that we have got a point True. where you actually have a balance like that in an FPS game where there are so many different abilities that interact with each other in the, the world differently. That's huge. And, like, obviously, like, you, you come from, from CS as well as Esht. I'm going to say yeah. one thing which shows the difference between these communities and why I love Valorant so much more at this stage, the Revolver. I genuinely don't think that Riot would ever give us the Revolver or what happened with that weapon on day Yeah, one. right. And I appreciate that security so much. I, you, so, you know, considering that, you still have to think, right? It must have went... Quickly diving into the Revolver, the R8 thing. It must have went to some feedback loop Right, there was not just one guy just saying, "I'm hacking the R8 into the system." It's got to be a big prank. They were. It must have went for like a bunch of developers sitting down, like, "Guys, um, this listen, is good. I came, I came up with this idea and this idea. Oh, there's an R8. Yeah, there's a revolver. Let's do it." So it still can happen. It could still happen. Yeah, on honestly, I I think that the the thing about Valorant is it's more geared towards the the people making it understand competitive FPS, whereas I think in the other uh situation it's kind of they make the game for casuals and i don't think they really understand the competitive circuit of their game so that they're in this position where like this fits the game you're like no no it does not why would you do that um Mitch. whereas uh, I, that's, that's why that's why i love this i love valorant man is it possible you consistently shit on valve to get popular at riot maybe maybe <laughs> if, if it's working i don't care <laughs> no well, i mean like the, the thing is i've been digging my own grave for a while because before valorant was even announced i was shitting on valve so i'm so happy that something true. has come along to give me that extra yeah. way out where i'm like oh okay bye <laughs> <laughs> well that's a very valid point i see where you're coming from with the revolver thing it is actually 
you know, bouncing that really rewinding it. If people don't know what happened in CS, there was a weapon for one day that was able to one shot people for eight hundred dollars, which is nothing. Yeah, yeah. Before mm -hmm. Victor, it was it was absolutely insane. Changed it one day after, but it's still the logic behind it. Like, why? Why? Why does it happen? And I think I see where you're coming from because in, in, in Valorant, it seems like it might take a month or two more till something new is happening. But it seems to be that they actually fought through this a little longer. Yeah, dude. There was there was one tweet which won me. It won me completely. Which is when I've said this a few times in the past. It was when Sage was in a position where uh, she was still being picked pretty much every game, and everybody. Well, it's unfair to say everybody. It's unfair to say, uh, but I'll say the majority of people will have said she was OP and she was being picked because of her heal. And they came out and said in a tweet and just made me smile so much. We're we don't think that I'm paraphrasing here. We don't think that Sage is um, in a good place. We think she needs to be nerfed. And it's not her healing. And I was like, thank you. So you're not just reading like one Reddit thread and going, oh, they said that we did this wrong. Let's fix it. They actually thought objectively about it from where it was in a competitive FPS ground and what was OP about Sage at the time and fixed it. And that made me so happy because we didn't have that luxury in the previous games I've been involved in. And I think it's, it's, re it's really commendable because it's hard, man. It's hard to balance an FPS game. It's really hard. And obviously like, for a company that balances League of Legends, which is a game that I've, I I used to cast another game with someone who's a, an LPL caster now, and he has tried many times to explain basic things about that game to me, and it just blows my mind. There's 151 champions, right? All of them have what five, four abilities. Yep. There's like a hundred items that they can pick which affect their abilities different and how they interact with another champion, all 150 other champions. How do you balance that, bro? How do you balance that? That's crazy. It goes, so, it goes deep, deep, deep. Yeah. And it's, I mean, we're going to get to that point in, in Valorant eventually because, as I said, six new agents every single year. You know, five years from now, if they stick to that, we have a lot of agents. You know, we've got like 50. Uh, that's, that's hard to balance. So I'm, I'm excited for those days to come. I want to give you a final thought because we're soon heading into our show match. Have you thought about okay. this? Do you know who recently has been benched in CS? Uh, Sir, are we talking Sergey or Crystal? Oh, okay. Oh, you know oh. many pro, pro players who didn't have too much of a bright future in CS anymore. You and know, you're thinking we just talked with Doom Rose. Oh, uh, no, 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 that can't be it. <laughs> that would be insane. If I called it right now, then I would legit, I mean, poof, <laughs> all right. I mean, wow, you, you got me there. Maybe, maybe, we'll find out. What we'll definitely find out is who's going to win the best of three. It is nothing else than a relevant show match brought to you by Logitech G, which will present you an outstanding Russian, Dutch, Swedish mix against the Finns, H-S-D-I-R-R, -R, my favorite name to say, versus Meowmot, which will right now compete on three excellent maps, Ascent, Haven, and Icebox, if we go to Icebox, of course. Yes, yes. So I, I spent the entirety, the entirety of the Twitch Rivals we did just screaming, begging, crying, asking for someone to play Icebox, and no one ever once. did. Let's go. Oh, once. yeah, it, it did. It did, actually. It did. It did. Portugal, I wanted I to see it constantly. Yeah. And, yeah. and that wasn't even pro teams. I just wanted to see high school players do it. So now we're coming into a stage where we've got two professional teams who are at a very deep stage within first strike. Potential to make it through to first strike. Basing off with each other on Icebox, are they going to play it properly? No. God, no, they're not going to give away their Icebox strats, no. but they'll play some element of how to play Icebox, and I'm excited to see that. True. Um, many hate Icebox, many find it horrible and horrific. Um, yeah, I think it I think it always reminds me of everything that has, you know, when Vertigo got introduced first in Counter-Strike, everybody's yeah. like, oh, oh, no, man. And then, it, you know, everybody gets used to it. I think Icebox is a different chapter. I really think Icebox is a different thing. But either way, I mean, I have very much heard that pretty much the game could go live any second soon, and the game has started. On my side is Mitch, Mitch Man McBride. My name is Sesh. 